This episode is proudly sponsored by my amazing patrons. For the multi tier, a heartfelt thank you to Ted and C, St. Peaches, Earl B, Christina N, Bunkers, Carlos C, and our newest multi patron, Ian. In the Tao tier, I extend a massive appreciation to Viren A, Jordan, Roman, Philip, Mona, Luna, Diwatahan, Brizo, and our latest Tao patron, Undead. Thank you all so much for your unwavering support. It truly means a lot to me. To you, my dear listeners, if you would like to support the podcast, please visit patreon.com slash tabitabipod. For as little as 2 or $6, you can enjoy early access to episodes, exclusive content, and more. Once again, that's patreon.com slash tabitabipod. See you there. Mabuhay and welcome to Tabi Tabi Podcast, a show where we explore the fascinating and often mysterious folklore of the Philippines. I am your host, Ethan. Hi, thanks for joining me today. Another week, another new episode. Hi and hello. Thanks for being here and I hope you enjoy your stay. Hey, did you know that Tabi Tabi Podcast has a YouTube channel? We actually do. I have posted a ton of videos there already and you might want to check it out. Some of the contents there may be familiar to you, some are not. I think I will upload there some of the Spotify content there as well because some people don't know Tabi Tabi Pod exists and this could be a very great opportunity to introduce them to our folklore. So if you don't know that we have a YouTube channel, go check it out. Go to YouTube and search for Tabi Tabi Podcast. Like and subscribe and I'd appreciate it a lot. Also, other than that, if you're interested in some spooky narrations to use as background noise while you're doing your own thing, I have another channel called Mama Creep. I post horror narrations there and you might want to listen to it. It's also available on Spotify but it has a different name though. I don't know why I did that but yeah. Just to clarify, it's Mama Creep for YouTube and Necronauts for Spotify for my horror story narrations. I'd appreciate if you listen and donate a few thumbs because I just, I don't know, I like, I like it when people use my voice as background noise when they do stuff. <laughs> it's, it's a thing now. But yeah, that is it for my announcements. Uh, follow my YouTube channels and I will see you there. With that being said, settle in my dear listeners and let's begin. In the Philippines, when you're knocking on someone's door, it's usually followed by Tao po. Have you ever wondered why though? For the longest time, I assumed it was merely a polite way of announcing our presence. However, as it turns out, the origins and significance of this phrase are far more intriguing and carry deeper cultural connotations than I initially thought. Taupo translates as I am a human being in English. It is based on the significantly held idea that hostile or threatening entities such as wicked creatures, elementals, and supernatural beings are incapable of communicating in human words. In simple terms, by saying Taupo, one is demonstrating their humanity and informing the people of the house that they are not a menace or a monster of the night. In an article for the Philippine Inquirer, Mr. Ambeth Ocampo explores the historical roots of this concept, connecting it back to before the Spanish invasion of the Philippines. During this period, doors lacked the convenience of peepholes. Without the ability to visually identify guests, our ancestors depended on verbal assurances to distinguish friends from foe. Our ancestors faced several dangers outside of their houses due to the lack of modern security systems. So in their view, things like aswang, elementals, and malicious spirits are serious threats. Unlike animals which could announce their presence with natural noises, these supernatural beings lacked the capacity to utter the words taupo. And as a result, 
the phrase became a critical precaution, a linguistic barrier against unwanted attacks from the supernatural realm. Now, given that scenario, what would you do if you heard a persistent knocking on your door in the middle of the night without hearing the phrase taupo? Would you choose to open the door or not? Back in 2022, I stumbled upon a TikTok video that piqued my interest. This video depicted a creepy scene, a cult supposedly roaming a town in Misamis Occidental, a province nestled in the Philippines' northern Mindanao region. From what I could gather, the videos went viral in April, though it seemed this disturbing phenomenon had been going on since March of that year. A flurry of films showing a cult allegedly haunting a village in Misamis Occidental flooded TikTok and Facebook. I never really came across any reports about it in major news media, so from what I can gather from the comment sections, it was said that these cults were active between 9pm to 4am and their origins are still a mystery. There were claims that they would knock on the doors of unsuspecting households, and those who dared to answer would fall victim to their sinister intentions. One of the individuals who shared footage purportedly showing the cult's presence was a netizen named Mariel M. Alianza. The videos captured scenes of people shouting in panic, their voices shaking with dread and desperation. In one video, residents were seen shining lights on rooftops after spotting figures crawling atop them. CCTV footage also surfaced, showcasing several individuals seemingly displaying unusual abilities. While some speculated these displays to be evidence of supernatural powers, others dismissed them as mere camera glitches. I couldn't find the exact video, but from the comment section, I read that there was an attack on March last year. There was a harrowing incident involving a mother and daughter who were allegedly attacked by these cults. It was also claimed that this sect emerged during Holy Week and lingered in the area for 45 days. Why? Because they have this belief that they require human sacrifices every centuries. That's why they linger for 45 days because they're looking for victims. However, before this actually get really out of hand, the authorities swiftly intervened and debunked the rumors of cult, and they attributed it to mass hysteria and fear. Which makes sense because it's in, in social media, a lot of people believe things easily. They, they, it's sort of like fear-mongering basically. So it was debunked by the police and I think that was good. Unfortunately, despite official reassurances, fear lingered in the community with residents dreading that their town might be the cult's next target. Speculations swirled about whether the cult was indeed real or merely a band of criminals. And unfortunately, the truth remained a mystery until today. But what is the connection of these knockings to today's story? Well, when I first heard about this alleged cult in Masamis Occidental, I immediately assumed it was a case of the Kumakatok. If you're not familiar with the Kumakatok, they are said to be a group of three robed entities, hunting the knights of the Philippines as harbingers of doom. According to local lore, the Kumakatok are believed to appear in the dead of night, clad in hooded robes that conceal their identities. Their eerie presence is often predicted by a series of ominous knocks on the doors of unsuspecting households. Though they bear a semblance to ordinary humans, you can't really see their faces because of the hood over their heads. Though there were some reports that say that one appears to be a young woman, while the second and third appear to be elderly males. It is not known where is their exact origin, but they are widely known in Luzon and Visayas area. 
Now, like what I mentioned earlier, the arrival of the Kumakatok is synonymous with approaching misfortune or it means something bad is going to happen. You see, a visit from the Kumakatok is usually a sign that someone will pass away. According to legend, either the eldest or the sickest member of the family will be the victim and die. Some accounts suggest that the visits of the Kumakatok became more frequent, particularly during times of widespread sickness or pandemics in towns. It is speculated that this increase in activity may be due to a higher number of people falling ill and being at risk of death. Oddly enough, this reminds me of the Grim Reaper because I feel like Based on the sentence or the description, I feel like the Kumakatok visits and escorts the dying person or ill person to the afterlife. Obviously, that kind of situation would definitely send people into a panic. Imagine dealing with a sickness spreading like crazy in your neighbor, and then on top of that, you hear stories about the Kumakatok lurking around. It's no wonder it would throw everyone into a state of chaos. You don't actually know who to believe. So, in an attempt to protect themselves from being the Kumakatok's next victim, the residents of Luzon and Visayas once resorted to painting white crosses on their doors, hoping it would repel these malevolent entities. I think they've started doing that because... You know, we're a Catholic country. When things get scary, people here tend to lean on their faith and the symbols of Catholicism for comfort. It's a way to feel protected from all the horrible stuff that's happened, you know? Now, I'm not entirely sure that this works, but let's say it does, okay? Supposing that this method proves effective, does the Kumakatok ultimately leave and never reappear? I think to some extent, yes. If it is indeed true that the Kumakatok are malevolent entities who harbor hatred towards Catholic symbols or are being repelled by Catholic symbols, then implementing such measures like painting a cross on your door may indeed lead them to leave you undisturbed. However, because of this belief, there have been other stories stating that since they cannot enter homes anymore, the Kumakatok have begun to shift their focus towards other establishments such as government buildings, hospitals, and churches. Thinking about that information, it feels like the Kumakatok cannot be stopped. It's like they have a mission and they must fulfill that mission. Now, another method, besides painting a cross on your front door, involves keeping all footwear outside of your house. If you have shoes or slippers placed outside your front door, it is advised to bring them inside. According to belief, if the Kumakatok visits your home and upon knocking they spot any footwear left outside, it is highly probable that the owner of that footwear will become their victim, and perish. Now, while reported sightings of the Kumakatok have declined since the tumultuous era of World War II, their eerie presence continues to stay in collective mind of Filipinos. However, Kumakatok is not the only knocking fiend that exists in Filipino folklore. Alongside the Kumakatok lies another sinister entity known as the Nangangatok. Unlike their human-ish counterpart, the Nangangatok is an unseen entity that stalks the shadows, preying on unsuspecting victims with its ominous knocks on doors. So to clarify, the Kumakatok has a physical form, a physical body, and they are the three-hooded figures, right? Whereas the Nangangatok, it doesn't have any physical body or physical form. I don't know if it's invisible, but they are unseen entity. So, imagine the scenario. It's the dead of night, and there's an insistent knocking on your door. Fueled by curiosity, you approach the window to catch a glimpse of the visitor. 
But to your dismay, there's nothing to be seen. With a sense of worry gnawing at you, you reluctantly open the door. But you find no one there. Unfortunately for you, you just granted entry to the unseen entity lurking outside. Little do you know, by doing so, you have invited in the ominous presence that was knocking at your door. In the days that follow, a threatening shadow hangs over your home. An unexpected tragedy occurs when one of the family members becomes seriously ill or dies prematurely. And that is the consequences of that fateful contact with the mysterious entity. So how do I keep this entity out of my house, Ethan? Well, it's simple. Don't open your doors. There's not really a step-by-step -step guide on how you can prevent this entity entering your house. But there wasn't any information as well that it could just enter your house willy-nilly. So therefore, I think you just don't open your doors when someone's knocking in the middle of the night. If you don't open your doors, maybe the nangangatok will move on to the next victim, plain and simple. Unless, of course, they identify themselves as a human being, then maybe you should. Maybe they are really asking for help. But if there's nothing, there's no sound at all other than knocking, don't answer it. It's better to keep yourself safe. Now, I think it's important to highlight the big differences between the nangangatok and its counterpart, the kumakatok. These are just my theories and from what I've understood in the research that our intern, Yana, gave us. Both of these entities are all about bringing bad luck, but they go about it in a very different way. The kumakatok just knocks on your door, and when you open the door, you might be greeted by three hooded figures and then maybe they disappear. I don't know if they enter the house. I never really encountered any article about it, but I would assume they would just disappear when you open the door. They don't necessarily need to be inside your house or maybe they don't really want to be inside your house. They're fine being outside. I mean, they've already done their duty. They already brought the doom to your home and that's it. But for the nangangatok, they're a whole different story. They don't just knock and disappear. It seems like they want to be inside your home as well. And once they're inside your house, you can bet that something bad is going to happen. And it's like they're determined to bring that tragedy right to your doorsteps and make themselves at home. In summary, while the kumakatok are depicted as three hooded figures, the nangangatok is described as an invisible entity. Despite their differing appearances, both serve as ominous messengers of death. Regardless of their distinct descriptions, the underlying message remains consistent. Encountering either entity means tragedy will happen to you or your family. And that concludes the 20th episode of the podcast about the mysterious and eerie Nangangatok and Kumakatok. I hope you learned something new. A massive thanks to our intern Yana for helping me with this episode. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Or you can always become a patron member and get cool benefits. Just head over to patreon.com slash tabidabipod. Or you can always donate via Gcash. The information will be posted in the description. Once again, thank you so very much to you, my patrons and my dear listeners. Thank you for continuously supporting the podcast. Please stay safe. And if you want, you can follow the Tabi Tabi podcast youtube channel also the uh, creepy narration stories the mama creep and necronotes i would really appreciate that once again this has been ethan and thanks for listening to tabi tabi podcast join me next time to discuss more philippine creatures bye <music>